We're going to take a look today at the flooding that occurred in southern Northumberland County here in Shemokin and Cole Township. We're going to see some of the work that we've been doing here in the area. As the Shemokin Creek winds its way through this little valley, about a thousand homes were damaged by the flooding. We've been working for the last year along with the Long-Term Recovery Committee here in Northumberland County to help the people of this area recover. This is a typical house here in the Shemokin area. The damage that you'll see in this house happened all up and down this street and the next street over. Some of the houses we've worked in, some of the houses uh, we don't even know if they've been cleaned out or not. Some were done by the families who live there and their loved ones. Uh, some we may find out about later that still need cleaned out. Up here on the roof, this is all covered in mold. You can see, if you look close, the mold spots. That means this entire roof is going to need to come out so that we can clean the mold out. There's insulation underneath here. The insulation is going to be covered in mold. These walls, the mold will grow right up the back of the plywood. So these walls will have to come out also. So basically, we're going to have to gut this entire basement. It's a lot of manpower. People coming down here that, of course, will be uh, dressed appropriately with masks on so that the mold doesn't affect them. And then once we get everything cleaned out, then we have to go through and spray for mold. And uh, that's the process that will take place here. This is one room in this basement. There's three rooms here that we'll have to gut out and uh, completely clean. Up in here, there's some mold. Right along here, you can just it's hard to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Peeling off on this side. Yeah. Got to come off anyway. Yeah, you can see it up in there. It gets into that paperboard. See it? Mm-hmm. And then it just grows and gets worse. This yellow house across the street is one of the first houses that we completed here in the Shemokin area thanks to a group of volunteers in mission from North Carolina who came up shortly after the flooding to help us out. They completely gutted the basement of this house and helped to make it safe and secure. Most of these houses here in the Shemokin area are double houses or triple, some are four in a row, and they're separated in the basement by a wooden wall. What we need to do is clean both sides of the wooden wall to spray them down for mold, which means if there's anything on the wall, we have to tear it out. This wall, once it was cleaned, was painted with a special paint that's mold resistant. So that these walls and all the walls around here are all painted with a mold resistant paint that'll help from now on to prevent mold from coming back. And this basement was all sprayed with mold killer so that it's safe and sanitary. Okay, this is the other side of the basement over there that we cleaned out. We had a group from North Carolina came in very early on in the flooding and there were five women who worked in this house. They would take everything off the walls, take all the, the insulation out of the ceiling, throw it on a tarp and drag it outside and put it in to a dumpster. And then afterwards they put this green board on the wall which is a um, water resistant wall board to to make this look nice but they cleaned everything up in this basement so that it's safe and sanitary this is one of the houses that the some of the women from my church worked on there were uh, three women two young ladies and their mother and then two other ladies from the church who uh, crawled around in this basement and took everything that was needed to be taken out out of the house. Well, when we saw saw the creek, ri creek, creek rising in the back. So we have the creek behind we us. Keep watch on the creek. We know it's going to come over. Now water starts coming down from the south end of Rock Street. And down. Out. It doesn't come in the front because we're higher here. Mm -hmm. And it comes in where our sewage pipes go out in the back on his property. Most of the water comes in there. I wasn't moving. 
I wasn't moving. I was staying right where I'm at. And I said if I had to go up to third floor, I'd go up there and let the fire truck get me out. We left for about uh, about two o'clock in the morning and come back about six. We went to my son's house. I was afraid of the fuse box being uh, losing power. Being that we were in the '72 flood, I had the fuse box moved up in the basement and all the receptacles put up in the ceiling, where that saved us. Didn't didn't hit the fuse box or anything. The next well, day. The next morning, early in the morning when we woke up over there. Looking back and opened the door and the water was already receding but the muck and mud was there. Well, people knocked on the door or called and says, do I need help to clean up my basement? I says, yeah. I says, I cleaned it out as good, well as I could. Got all the muck out but I can't, there's not much more I can do down there and I have nobody, my son has problem himself and with working and they volunteered to come in and, and help us me. out. Helped us out a million. It, it was a family. I know there was, there was a wife, a mother and two daughters, I think. Yeah, because were they were from up around Winfield up that way. Around Winfield. They, well, were, they come in and did everything. They cleaned the stuff. They got when a dumpster came, they just went through it. This, the whole cellar up, got rid of all, everything. Down they, there. Said, they didn't carry much wanna, out this way. They broke everything up, put it out that little I'll window, that and window. then load it in a dumpster. We're very well now. Yeah. And they were saying that we had that what that black mold down the cellar a little bit, and that we had to have that cleaned out, do and. To, now I just. Send a check to the Red Cross whenever I have extra money. They helped us and we got to help them people. I'm talking to Gail Zaylor at CSO. And uh, tell me what CSO stands for and the kind of work that you do for CSO. CSO stands for Central Susquehanna Opportunities. We are the Community Action Agency for Northumberland, Montour, and Columbia Counties. Um, we also do workforce development. Um, CSO Community Action Agency leads people to self-sufficiency, so anything that they need in order to become self-sufficient, that is what we do. Um, we are housed here in Schmokin, and we have offices in Danville and um, also in Bloomsburg. Um, as far as the flood relief efforts, we were um, involved from day one of the flood in September of 2011, and we started with um, the immediate needs of our people, and then were designated the Long-Term Recovery Committee for uh, Northumberland County, and I am the chairperson for that committee. Uh, go back to that date, if you would, for me, and explain a little bit of what the beginnings of this disaster were like for the town. Um, it was very new to all of us. Um, we weren't prepared. Um, we just kind of had to form and, and work with the people as they were coming in. Um, the Red Cross opens a shelter immediately in this building. We had about 120 people actually uh, housed at the shelter. Um, CSO saw a need. And we stepped in and we were working with the Red Cross. Um, we were handing out the disaster supplies, going to the house to see them what people need it. And then um, it just kept uh, forming from there. Uh, we were doing door to door, checking on the elderly. The area that was hit um, was mostly the elderly population. Um, so we were trying to assist them, trying to make sure that everybody had the food and the resources that they needed, reaching out to different um, organizations. And that's how we, um, by determining the needs of what our residents needed, um, we reached out to groups. And that's how we got involved with the United Methodist uh, group. And um, they have been so helpful to our committee that we can't thank them enough. All right, I'm talking to Kathy O'Grady. And Kathy, welcome and thanks for talking to me today. Um, you got involved, the flood happened in September. You got involved in December. Now, with what kind of work were you doing in December? I got hired on through the National Emergency Grant and as a flood relief coordinator. And tell me what your day-to-day -day work was. What were the kinds of things that you did? You told me you, do, you did door-to-door -door work, is that right? Yeah. What did that involve? 
I went down to where it was hit the most in Shemokin, Rock Street, Shemokin Street, where it got flooded the most, and just went door to door and asked if they had any needs that weren't met, that um, weren't met by FEMA money or that they weren't able to do that they needed help with, and took a list of it and then um, contacted Pastor Larry and um, lined up volunteers and did some work ourselves too, a lot of mold spraying. Tell me a little bit about what kind of feelings go on inside, in, in, on inside of you when you're addressing a disaster like this. What are you thinking about? Well, um, compassion, because um, a lot of the flood victims that we are dealing with are people who couldn't help themselves, the elderly and the poor and the disabled. And so a lot of compassion because they're so overwhelmed and they didn't know where they turned to. And um, so it's very much a good thing that we got this grant to be able to help them. I'm speaking with Andy Fox, as it says on your name tag. Thanks for talking to me, Andy. Tell me what your function was in the middle of this disaster. I came on board in March of 2012. I'm a flood relief coordinator for Northumberland County of Pennsylvania. Since I've come on board, we've inspected a lot of homes. We take a look at a lot of basements out here in Shemokin. Uh, the flood hit a lot of people's first floors. Uh, it was really devastating around here. It's just amazing what water can do. Uh, since I've come on board, we basically try and find all of the unhealthy situations that have come around since the flood has happened. Uh, mold, uh, mildew, rotting walls. Uh, we have some homes where some of the foundations of basically worn away because of the issues that have happened. Tell me how this changes the life of a young man who deals with a disaster of this magnitude. Uh, to be honest, before I came on board here, you didn't think about it. it. It's like nobody knew that it was happening. It's happening around you, but nobody knew about it. It kind of opens your eyes a little bit. You know, there's a lot more going on than what you see. And I think that could probably happen anywhere. It also opens my eyes to this is happening not just in our area, it's happening all over the country. I'm talking to Joanne Palachek. Joanne, thanks for talking to me. You're um, I understand that your work after the disaster started about when? In April, after a couple months later. Year. Right, 2012, right, right. Okay. right. What was the kind of work that you did? Basically uh, calling the clients, finding out what their needs were, seeing if they even need help yet, and um, making up like a form that we have and summarizing so that the case managers could then go out and visit. I set up home inspections so that they could, again, visit the house, see what the needs were there once they got there to make sure. How did you know who to call? We had a list, uh, originally the list was provided by FEMA and we worked from that and then we had two volunteers, very helpful volunteers that came in and made some of the initial calls just to even get them on the phone and say, do you need help? And then I would follow up more or less making the appointments and finding more information out from them. Can you give me an idea of how many people this was? Well, roughly the list, I guess, was, what, 1,400, I think we said. And then uh, we kept narrowing that down. And we even still today have clients that we haven't even been able to get out and visit yet. So we probably have about 140 or so clients we still need to see. 20 years from now, what will you mo most remember about this disaster? The people when you go to visit their homes, because I have had the opportunity to go out on some of the inspections and, you know, kind of that. They don't know who to turn to sometimes, a lot of them. Getting information out to them was kind of important, and yet we still haven't, we don't feel reached everybody. You've had a chance to see what the long-term recovery community is doing here in the Shemokin and Cole Township area. There are seven other long-term recovery committees within our annual conference that are doing the same thing in their areas. Seven other groups that are trying to help their communities recover just like this group is doing.